And he's trying to get you, to fool you, to believing that he's carried his burden of proof that never a single time in their relationship was he in any way, physically or non-physically, abusive to Miss Heard. And that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So let's look at some of that evidence. And like I said, you can apply your own common sense. You don't need to check that at the door when you go into the deliberation room. I'm going to walk you through the evidence, some of the evidence that's been presented, including evidence from Mr. Depp's own mouth, his own words, or the words of his witnesses. Keep in mind the burden of proof. And as we go through this evidence, I'd ask you to keep this in mind as well. It's not about who's the better spouse. It's not about whether you think Miss Heard may have been abusive to Mr. Depp. It's not. Because remember, if you think that they were both abusive to each other, and that's what their witness, Laurel Anderson, testified to, then Amber wins. They're trying to trick you into thinking that Amber has to be perfect in order to win, even while they're ignoring Jay, Mr. Depp's many flaws. But don't fall for that trick. Amber's not perfect. None of us are. She's never pretended to be, and that's not what you're being asked to decide. One time, ladies and gentlemen, one time, if he abused her one time, Amber wins. Actually, if he fails to prove that he never abused her one time, Amber wins. So let's take a look at some of the evidence. This was one of the first messages shown to Mr. Depp in his cross-examination. This is a message to Paul Bettany, his drug buddy, early on in their relationship, when he says, let's burn Amber, let's drown her before we burn her, I will fuck her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she is dead. Some of the most vile, disgusting language that you could ever imagine. That is what he said to her at the beginning of the relationship. So let's look at how the relationship was bookended. You remembered Mr. Depp the other day in response to some texts that we'll see later saying, I don't write like that. This is a bookend of the relationship. This is after it was over. I asked Mr. Depp to read that top text. You'll remember that was the only thing I asked him to read, and he immediately said I didn't write that text, even though, of course he did, even though he wrote the text underward, uh, under it that said, hopefully that cunt's rotting corpse is decomposing in the fucking trunk of a Honda Civic. That's how he bookended their relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, these words are a window into the heart and mind of America's favorite pirate. This is the real Johnny Depp. This is the real Johnny Depp after Miss Heard decided that she couldn't take it anymore, decided that she needed to leave him. And I'm not going to reread this whole text to you. But this is where she's, he says she's begging for global humiliation, and she's going to get it. He says, I'll stop at nothing, and I can only hope that karma kicks in and takes the gift of breath from her. One of the only promises to Mr. Miss Heard that Mr. Depp has ever kept. That's how he ended the relationship. But you saw how he started it. Now, Miss Heard did testify on the stand that Mr. Depp abused her countless times. First, it started, they, they were very happy. They started dating in 2011, and things were good. And she testified that even during periods of abuse, even during their relationship, when there was abuse occurring, that there were periods where they were very happy. It's the cycle of violence. It's the cycle of sobriety. There were periods when everything was good, when the monster was gone, and then the monster would return. You heard about how the first incident of incidents of violence took place in 2012, when Ms. Heard asked Johnny about his tattoo that used to say Winona forever and had been changed to say Wino forever. And she laughed. And she said, and he slapped me across the face. She thought it was a joke, and then he did it two more times. And then he said, I thought I put the monster away, and I've done it before. That's what she, he said to her during that first incidence of violence. But you don't just have to take what Mr. Depp said in his text, we can hear through his own voice what he called Miss Heard. Because you're a fucking cunt! We talked about the monster. You heard Mr. Depp get on the stand and say that that was Miss Heard's term. She made it up. 
That was what she used to refer to him when she was nagging him because she didn't want him to have a good time. She didn't want him to have a beer once in a while. That's what he's implying. But no, this was a term created by Mr. Depp that she heard for the first time in 2012 after he slapped her three times across the face and said, I thought I put the monster away. And after he sat up here on the stand under oath and told you that she made that term up, we look back at his texts, the writing at the time. The first text is after Australia in 2015, during a period of sobriety, a short-lived period of recovery for Mr. Depp, when he told Jerry Judge, his bodyguard, all I had to do was send the monster away and lock him up. Remember, he texted Elton John, or sent an email to Elton John in 2012, referring to himself as the monster. He tells Dr. Kipper, the doctor to whom he's paid millions and millions and millions of dollars, thank you, my darling Kipper. He says, I've locked my monster child away in a cage deep within. He tells Stephen Duders, you know Mr. Duders, he liked to text Mr. Duders, he tells him, she thinks my Peruvian period, which is a reference to cocaine, he admitted to that, that that means him using cocaine, has made me a monster and that I am ruining the relationship. Imagine that, someone actually thinking that maybe the impact of alcohol and cocaine is ruining a relationship. How dare she? He says, need to discuss the news helicopters. The monster, I want to shoot a motherfucker, but don't worry, the monster is not, not involved. Mr. Depp knows that he can turn into a monster. He knows that. He knows that. He got up here on the stand and tried to deny that to you. Talk about lack of accountability. Let's see the monster. Let's see the monster in the flesh. I just woke up and you were so sweet and nice. We were not even fighting this morning. All I did was say sorry. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. Um, no, that's the thing. You want to see crazy? I'll give you fucking crazy. That's crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah, have you drunk this whole thing this morning? Oh, you got this going. You got this going. Just it. Oh, really? Yes. Really? See that shit on me? No, I didn't. You were smashing shit. Oh, bye. See Miss Her laughing in that? She's not laughing in that. Mr. Depp in this courtroom right now is laughing and making snide remarks as that video is being played, but it's not a laughing matter. Who does that? Who does that? Imagine being in Amber's shoes on February 10th, 2016, videotaping him when he's because when he's sober and sweet, you've never loved anything more. But when he mixes the drugs and he mixes drinks, he turns into this man. You've seen it before. You're praying it won't happen again, but deep down, you know it will. You know that that man will come out. You know that monster will come out, and you want him to change. Imagine watching your husband, the person you love, behaving violently that way, like a wild animal. That is abuse. That's abuse. 
And you don't have to look at that incident in isolation to find that it's abuse. You can look at it in the context of their whole relationship. This isn't about breaking down a series of individual days that you've heard evidence about. This is about the, the, the cumulative effect of Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard's relationship and whether that constitutes abuse. That is abuse, ladies and gentlemen. That's domestic abuse. And their response is, she sold it to TMZ, which she didn't. There's no evidence of. And she was on a plane. The only evidence suggests she was on an international flight when Mr. Tremaine testified that they received it and it was validated within something like 15 minutes, which could only have happened by the person who sent it. Ms. Heard was in the air. She didn't send it to TMZ. She never leaked anything to TMZ, as you heard from her own mouth. Who would want that to become public? Again, in order to find for Mr. Depp, you would have to find that for his defamation claim, every single thing that ever happened between them that could constitute abuse, Amber was the abuser. Every single time. You'd have to believe the unbelievable. You all are smarter than that. But Mr. Depp thought he could hide it. He thought he could hide the monster. That's why he lied in insurance forms that you have to fill out in order to be able to act. That's why he said... He hadn't taken illegal substances, whether pres prescribed by a physician or not. That obviously wasn't true within the past 12 months. They keep talking about Mr. Depp's role as a father. This is what he, te what he sent, a text that he sent in DX207. Now Lily Rose, his daughter, hates me because she thinks I'm drinking and she's right, but I can't admit, or I fucking die in her eyes. Thanks for that one, Vanessa. This is Mr. Depp passed out in a Tokyo hotel room during the press tour for the Lone Ranger in 2013, when Ms. Heard testified that Mr. Depp screamed at me, and all I could think were the kids are in an adjoining room. Mr. Depp passed out with his head like this. I don't think he was sleeping on the floor because he had a bad back. They keep referring to these pictures as she took pictures of Mr. Depp while he was asleep. He's not asleep in that picture. He's passed out, drunk and high, and she's taking pictures because she wants him to realize what he's done and get help and seek help. I don't think that looks like the spice cabinet of anyone in this courtroom. That's Mr. Depp. This is Mr. Depp. This is Mr. Depp. This is Mr. Depp. And all you hear from Mr. Depp when these pictures are shown is snickering and defiance. Victim blaming. Blaming Ms. Heard for taking this picture of him, for trying to help. So let's talk about some of these instances of abuse. Oh, forgot one. In March 2013, talked about the, the Wino Forever tattoo. In March 2013, there were a couple instances. There was one where on March 8th, and we'll get to that in a, in a second, where he was drinking brown liquor and doing a lot of cocaine. Or that might have been March, sorry, that was March 22nd. On March 8th, this is when Mr. Depp backhanded her. She felt like her lip went into her teeth and got a little blood on the wall. He grabbed her by the arm and held her on the floor, screaming at her. We'll come back to this in a minute. This is March 22nd. This is what Mr. Depp said isn't every hour happy hour. Again, totally abandoning any responsibility for behavior like this. But what happened on March 22nd is he wanted Ms. Heard to remove a painting by her ex-partner. And he wanted to admit to an affair that she wasn't having. She didn't admit to it because it wasn't true. So he decided to have some lines of cocaine and some whiskey for breakfast. And then, on the way to filming the Keith Richards documentary, after a multi-hour argument, he grabbed their dog, their teacup Yorkie, and holds the dog, Boo, out of the window of a moving car. And he's howling like an animal, Miss Heard said, while holding the dog out of the car. That is abuse, ladies and gentlemen. That's abuse. Let's go back to this, because 
Ms. Vasquez read a parade of witnesses that she believes support Johnny's defense in this case. But as you've seen over the course of this proceeding, these witnesses, as I previewed in the opening, almost all of them are witnesses on his payroll. They're all scared to say anything bad about him. And they've seen what happens to people who do. And none were there for the instances of domestic violence. What they're saying is, oh, if he didn't abuse Ms. Hurd in front of his four bodyguards, then it must have never happened. That's essentially what they're asking you to believe. That's ridiculous. That's not the way domestic violence works. Take his sister, Christy. I know it seems like a year ago, but she was the first witness in this case. You remember her on the stand when I presented her with these texts that say, stop drinking, stop coke, and stop pills. You'll remember her squirming and saying, oh, I don't think I was asking him to stop drinking, stop coke, stop pills. She couldn't even answer that basic question because she wanted to lie for Mr. Depp and say that it, Ms. Hurt was delusional. She couldn't even admit this to you. She's nothing but an enabler. The same with Sean Beck, his head of security, who's been sitting in this courtroom for the past six weeks. He's right there. Mr. Bett was the one who testified to you that when Mr. Depp has a few drinks of alcohol, he said, I wrote this down, he said it's like the rest of us drinking sparkling water. I don't think that kitchen video that we just saw was like you or I when we drink sparkling water. This is the same Sean Bett who said that on the evening of May 21st, 2016, which Elaine will talk about in a little bit, he said Mr. Depp may have bumped something off a table. You've seen the pictures. You'll see them again. Just like Travis McGivern said that Mr. Depp rearranged Ms. Hurd's closet. You've seen the pictures. You'll see them again. Just like Tara Roberts in the Bahamas, who tried to blame everything on Ms. Hurd and only under cross-examination admitted that Mr. Depp passed out face down in the sand underneath a hammock and his son Jack found him there. She took a video of their cabin in the Bahamas to try to suggest to you that this assault that Ms. Hurd alleges couldn't have taken place. But conveniently, she didn't take the camera into the closet where Mr. Depp held Ms. Hurd, <coughs> hit her. We'll get to that incident. She didn't take the video camera into the bathroom where he sexually assaulted Ms. Hurd. She didn't do that because she wanted to generate evidence only favorable to Mr. Depp. Think about Sean Bett and Starling Jenkins' conflicting stories about the birthday party on April 21st. Remember, Mr. Depp experienced horrific financial news the evening uh, of that night, April 21st, 2016. He learned that he was essentially out of money and he needed to start selling things. Well, we all know what Mr. Depp does when he receives bad news like that. He left the meeting at 9.30 and didn't arrive at Ms. Hurd's birthday party until 11.15. Okay, fine, he was late. But we all know what he does when he has that hour and 45 minutes of free time and he's stressed out about something. Mr. Bett testified, remember he said, I took him to his home on Sweetser Avenue, his other home, to pick up a birthday present for Ms. Hurd. That's what he said. That's what he said. Mr. Jenkins, you'll, you may remember him, he testified by the video link on the stand, and I said, you don't know what he did in that intervening time period. And he said, oh yes, I do, I do. He said, Mr. Depp was visiting his sick mother. And I said, who told you that? And he said, Mr. Bett. The witnesses that Mr. Depp has paraded up here, who are here in person, they're here in person because they're on his payroll, almost all of them. And they're telling you whatever they think they need to tell you to get you to take Mr. Depp's side. 